In this class, we're going to learn how to remember the electron configura uh, configuration, or how to draw, or to write, the electron configuration of ground state elements. To assist us in doing this, we have a shell-filling mnemonic, as I like to call it. It's a memory aid. This is the order of the filling of the electron shells in an atom. So you follow the arrows. It starts from the lowest level and goes to the higher quantum numbers. Uh, the way we draw this mnemonic is we do the numbers 1 through 8, and we put S next to each number on the first level. Then we do the numbers 2 through 7, putting P next to each number, and we skip the first two to start the next tier. Then we skip another two to start the third tier, put the numbers 3 to 6, and the letter D next to each one, skip another two, 4 and 5, putting F next to each one. So S, P, D, and F represent the different electron um, orbital shapes. S orbitals are spherical. P orbitals, D orbitals, and F orbitals tend to be lemniscate. They look like figure eights, but they're oriented in different directions around the nucleus. And as more and more electrons are packed around a given nucleus, they occupy higher and higher energy level levels further and further away from the, uh, from the nucleus. You can only have two electrons in an S orbital. A P orbital can only hold uh, six electrons, d orbitals of a, of a given quantum number can only hold ten electrons, and f orbitals of a given quantum number can only hold up to fourteen electrons. So to start simply, we look at hydrogen. Hydrogen is in only in possession of one electron, so the electron will fall to the lowest level, which is the 1s orbital, and there will only be one electron in that orbital. The orbital doesn't, isn't full until we have helium. With helium, the configuration is 1s2. This, these superscripted numbers mean the num uh, they symbolize how many electrons are in that orbital. Now, before electrons go to another orbital, they have to fill the one that's below it. Remember, we're talking about ground state elements. In an excited atom, it can happen that you have some electrons at a lower level and some of the electrons at a higher level. So let's look at some of the, well, we can look at lithium first. Lithium has three protons and therefore has three electrons when it's a neutral atom. And so it'll fill the s orbital, 1s2, and then it'll, it'll put one electron in the next highest level, which is the 2s orbital. And we follow the pattern. The pattern is, most of the time the pattern will, will be followed. There are some exceptions where some orbitals get filled while breaking that normal pattern, but we'll look at those exceptions later. Let's look at mercury with 80 electrons. Mercury's configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and you can tell at which points you are in the periodic table by the position in the block. We continue 3D10, 4P6, 5S2. If we look at S block, this is S block. And we count down the periods, period 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5s2 will bring us right here. Mercury is down here. So we're going to find mercury right after um, 6s. Let's continue. 5s2, 4d10 traverses the whole transition metal block. 5p6, 6s2, now we're here. We have to put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 more electrons. <coughs> so we're going to put, after 6s2, we would have 4f, 14, and then traversing part of d block up to 10 electrons, 5d10, right at the end of d block. That's why we have 10 electrons at the end of it. Now, if you want to make extra sure. You can see that there's 10 electrons here, 10 electrons there, another 10 here. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 
plus 8, 48, 48 plus 8, 56, 56 plus 10 is 66, 66 plus 14, total of 80 electrons, which is what the configuration of mercury. So this would be the electron configuration of mercury, and it follows the pattern as predicted.